Okay. So tidal heating also affects Europa and Ganymede. Let me show you Europa. Um, Europa has a higher density than some of the icier moons because it does have a decent sized rocky core. Um, it doesn't have an atmosphere, but it does have a liquid ocean under its surface. And the reason we know this is, for one thing, looking at these surface features. So all these little cross-hatched kind of linear segments are areas where ice has melted. Um, it has rotated on top of like, it's like a floating iceberg that's rotated and then refrozen with other rotated pieces. That's the current explanation for these cross-hatch patterns. Um, so that must mean that Europa's icy crust is floating on top of a liquid subsurface ocean. There are lots of other different surface features on Europa, and you have to come up with some explanation for any surface features other than craters, right? Um, so there's resurfacing that has happened for any of this other uh, type of feature. So in cross-section, Europa would look like this, where it has its um, metal rocky core, it has its rocky mantle, and then it would have just a very thin shell of a subsurface ocean beneath an icy crust. So we know that there must be some sort of heat source inside Europa, otherwise there would be nothing to, first of all, keep that subsurface ocean molten, and otherwise it would just be ice through and through. Um, we also know that Europa has experienced resurfacing because it's not a very cratered world. And all of those clean lines from the ice refreezing are kind of the nail in the coffin. So Europa definitely has um, significant tidal heating to keep it active enough to be resurfaced. But you'll notice this is very different than Io. Io is like a real volcanic planet with you know, proper lava volcanoes. Um, Europa experiences what we would call um, like more of a cryogeology. So geology differences driven by ice. Um, we can measure also from space that it has warm spots under its surface and it has a magnetosphere, which is presumably generated by that subsurface ocean as well. Um, Europa is an interesting target and there is a probe by the ESA that's going to explore the icy moons of Jupiter to learn more about them. Okay. So Europa has a weak magnetic field, but Ganymede has a strong magnetic field. And in both of these cases, we need to explain where it could come from. So as a review, why did the Earth or the Jovian planets have magnetic fields? All right. Yeah, so lots of these factors could be relevant. Um, the origin of the magnetic field on the terrestrials does come from iron. But on the uh, Jovian planets, it comes from metallic hydrogen. So the key factor that the terrestrials and Jovians have in common is that that material needs to be molten and it needs to be moving around inside the planet. Um, so for the Galilean moons, Ganymede has the strongest magnetic, magnetic field. Io also has a weak one, uh, or sorry, Europa also has a weak magnetic field. So um, Ganymede, um, here has the strongest field, and let's explore why that is. So Ganymede has a lower density than Europa because it's more ice than um, Europa by volume. It does not have an atmosphere, but its magnetosphere is stronger. Um, it does have quite a bit of cratering on its surface, but there is some surface uh, features that suggest that there's basically water that seeps out from underneath. So these cracks are areas where there's been some filling in by water seeping out from the underground ocean. And the ocean in Ganymede is a lot thicker than the ocean on Europa. That saltwater ocean extends a considerable depth into the planet. Um, it actually might contain more total liquid water than Earth has, which I think is pretty rad. And so this saltwater ocean is partially responsible for Ganymede's magnetic field. It's a conductor of liquid because it's salt water and it's in motion under Ganymede. All right. 
our last Galilean moon is Callisto. Callisto is the most heavily cratered of all. Like I said before, it's mostly undifferentiated. Um, it might have a small ocean under its surface as well. So it's another interesting target to go continue to measure um, to see because of the magnetic field, whether it does have that um, subsurface salt water like the other um, Europa and Ganymede do.